Uh, welcome to Unscripted 2021. I'm Shlomo Bilak, Chief Technology Officer at Benchmark Corp. And I'm going to share with you some insights that uh, you have never seen before. It is one of our uh, new technology approaches for the SCLC, uh, and we basically call it uh, forget production, observability, and non-production necessity. Uh, I do want to give a little context to who we are at uh, Benchmark and, and myself and background. I'm going to share today one of nine unique reinventions of the SDLC. So we're not following rearview mirror. We're not following the practices you see others doing. We are entirely presenting customer engineered uh, solutions that needed to be solved and we want to share with you. So we're the builders, the architects, the pioneers, and we have a multitude of organizations that we are providing intellectual property to guidance and trying to reinvent how we do software delivery. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to actually present reasoning as to why we think the way we think today, uh, which is we put a lot of our spend and focus on production. And look, it makes a lot of sense. Our contracts that we sign with enterprise customers or even a startup, any customer that you have, you're going to have commitments. They're going to be backup commitments, availability commitments. They're going to be SLAs. All of these things affect how you operate your systems. And we traditionally only apply that to production. Uh, Non-prod, uh, almost across all organizations, is usually a smaller version uh, or an abbreviated version of production. Uh, and then you move to the next reasoning. You know, there are so many non-production systems. It would cost me so much money if I was going to put something like an APM, uh, synthetic testing, RUM testing on, uh, on all of these systems. So there's a good reason why we're not doing it. Like I, I'm trying to uh, provide the insights that everybody has in the market. And then again, I don't really load the production like data in many cases. And the way that we operate production is focused on fixing things, right? Production, we're going to make sure it doesn't go down. We're going to make sure we have high availability. But really, our approach is more of figure it out, proactive alerting and learning in prod, right? There's a lot of learning that happens in prod, and prod reacts differently than non-production. The more frequent the releases, the harder people work. Uh, so this is currently the reasoning within observability and a lot of products out there do focus on production. I'm going to actually argue every single one of these away. I'm going to show you as we go through this session uh, how you can solve each one of these, show you example pipelines that actually do solve these, but we do have requirements that are important. So let me set some context. Um, I want to refocus your thinking first. I think we can all agree that non-prod provides no customer value, uh, unless it's like a, a testing environment or a demo environment, but traditionally dev, QA, performance testing, UAT is not a customer value. It's, it's just area that we work through to get confidence for production. So non-production must provide confidence for production deliveries. Uh, so in non-production, thrash it, push it, destroy it. Uh, but only after you get the metrics uh, for, for that release or for that change in production. So let's solve all those reasons uh, to get true confidence for production, not in production. So this is, this is the mentality we're focused on today, which is around in production is where I'm going to build my confidence and I build SMEs. I'm going to actually show you that the SDLC itself can own all of the confidence requirements uh, so that when you go to prod, it's basically a non-event, and it can be a non-event for years. Um, let me go into each of the items, and we'll walk through it. If I need to build confidence for production, which is the only reason non-production exists, it does not provide customer value, I need to change how I do the SDLC. Don't worry, I'll actually show you what these SDLC changes look like in pipelines. Non-production doesn't have an SLA. So that is the place to test resilience methods and to destroy it. There is no reason that non-production should persist uh, unless you're trying to avoid fixing brittleness. It should entirely match production only if you destroy it. So I'm changing the entirety of how SDLC approaches and, and chaos engineering, rethink chaos engineering. SDLC, non-production, I finished, I got my metrics, destroy it. 
you're going to create resilience, but you're also going to give you the ability to mimic production in non-production. Uh, this is key. This is one of the main findings we've had is nobody's going to give you money for an environment that provides no value to customers. That's why non-production is small. But if I destroy it after running it for 30 minutes or an hour, no one's going to say for those 30 minutes, I don't want you to spend an extra thousand dollars. They're going to let you mimic production, production data, because you're going to also, you can destroy that too. Uh, they're going to let you mimic it. So now I'm going to get a duplicate of production in all the stages that last only for the time I need to collect my confidence. And then I'm only going to run it during the need for confidence, which is the release itself. I'm making change. I want to get confidence of the change. This will reduce your licensing and operating costs of the solutions to monitor. Uh, so if you're getting charged per hour, when you're consuming it or you need a pool of licenses, imagine if I only run things independently as needed as smaller pools that run infrequently. So your license requirements for non-production completely come down because it's not going to be there the entirety of the time. You're not gonna consume uh, the hours of the license. Like uh, Dynatrace had uh, per hour and some of them do even the size or how many machines you're doing it for a smaller period. Now, now that I've done these things, I'm going to explain how you get to this point, by the way. If you're confused, don't worry. Uh, I'll, so, I'll give you a solution because we're not doing this today as a norm. I need to make the load and data match production as well. And I want to push it 10 times what production has. Not smaller, 10 times. So I know at which point does production fall over so that when production actually happens, which is the next state, if I'm very confident in non-production, production is going to be flawless. And anybody that argues that you can't do flawless in production has no idea what it takes to blow up a non-production environment and slam it super hard to figure out where it breaks and falls over. Falling over in non-prod is fine. Falling over in triaging and proactive monitoring in prod makes no sense. Again, so I'm challenging each of the contexts that we do the SDLC today to basically present that our focus of observability and production doesn't make sense if we move it to build confidence in non-production for production. Uh, again, production should be quiet and velocity should not impact the production stability. The only reason it does is we're working proactively and I'm using proactive in a negative term, you don't need to work proactively in production if you're not expecting issues to occur. Now, there are very small circumstances that things could occur. And look, it's nice to have the observability so you can react, but it should be extremely infrequent if you're doing things correctly. Okay, I wanted to share a little bit here on, there's a lot of non-production environments. There's always usually a singular production environment. The key to getting this to function, like if I'm going to destroy it, I actually have to be able to create it. Uh, and I wanted to put these uh, requirement steps for what I call impermanent non-production, which is a term I created, uh, is if I converge infrastructure delivery pipelines with the app delivery, the CICD, I can actually do on-demand environments that have uh, an app uh, pipeline part of it. Uh, and the clock with the pop, I designed that. Uh, I couldn't figure out any other way. I use it for the metrics and then I destroy it. Uh, I don't need to persist all of these non-production systems, uh, which cost a lot of money. And I could actually match prod. I could, uh, I could start doing things where I have observability before production with no impact to customers. These are the practices we should be doing. The, the entire market's completely upside down and, and haven't figured these things out. So I'm sharing with you stuff many haven't done yet. But essentially, it's converging GitOps and CICD methodologies together as a singular pipeline so I can blow away non-production. It provides no value. I need the metrics so that production, when it occurs, I don't need to pay attention to it because nothing happened. It's a rinse and repeat model of the previous stages because they're exact duplicates of production that went under additional stresses that production is not facing. Completely reverse how we're doing things today. And if I'm passionate, that's just how I work. Uh, this is an example pipeline. I'll actually show you in Harness one as well because I think they simplify how you can do verification within a pipeline. This is an open source example that I wanted to share. Building confidence for production 
is the value of the SDLC. Nothing more. What does the SDLC exist for if it doesn't provide confidence to actually go to where the customers are? This pipeline creates the environment, delivers the application, slams the environment, right? Validates the environment itself. So if you have an APM, in this case, it's Dynatrace. So you could use other ones if you want. Uh, they all do time series data comparisons, control data to test data. If the performance and gate security gates are, are checked, we're not gonna talk about DevSecOps right now. Deploying to production is pretty simple. I, I've obviously simplified this here. Uh, there's many more state stages that gets tested, but they're all mimics and uh, of the same pipeline, the same environment of prod that only lasts for a little while and then they're destroyed. So you'll note on the right side, it's destroying the environment. I don't need to keep it. So this is one example. I did want to touch on some of the things I, I, I don't work for Harness, just so everybody's aware. I have been a very satisfied customer of Harness and we have customers that are very satisfied. They take all the APMs and log aggregators and make it very simple for you to know if things are gonna be good or not. I, I don't like the screenshots that they have uh, because it actually represents what I'm saying you shouldn't do. If prod fails, you did the SDLC wrong. Uh, that is a statement, that's a fact. Uh, I've run production systems for almost a year. Uh, and I have no production failures and there's thousands of deployments. Now, the question becomes, why is that? It's because the methodologies we're spending on non-production to provide confidence for production. Uh, so if you do a perfect rinse, repeat, destroy model and it's applied correctly, the failures will happen frequently in non-production under you know, the stress and uh, load that you're intending to put there. And then production becomes a silent non-event that nobody has to pay attention to unless it calls us. Look, I'm not saying don't do APM or log aggregation and production, that would be insane. Uh, all I'm saying is the need for it should be very minimal because you've put the need for it in non-prod to build that confidence for uh, production, right? I'm putting things in where it matters. It should be in a state of near perfection. Um, I just wanted to close a little bit here with one statement, production is not where you build confidence. It is where it goes. That is the entirety of this observability track talk. Uh, I know it's a little different, uh, but the only way to do this is not to figure things out in prod. It's to simplify uh, the non-production uh, in my eyes, I guess that's simplifying, to get the metrics that you need so that it can give you the confidence for prod. I thank Harness. Uh, to support and push forward the unscripted conference to share these capabilities with the wider market and for uh, asking me to speak to the observ observability track, which is a very hard word to say. Maybe we'll call it metrics next time. Cheers and thank you.